and welcome to our Lord's Day worship. Today we're going to be discussing in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, if you want to turn there. Ephesians chapter 4, and I want to talk to you today about something very important. At the beginning of each month we talk about one another's. And this one, this one another in particular right now is something we need to focus on. The church People in general, we all need to do this. And it is to bear with one another. Do you know how crazy people can be? How annoying people are sometimes? I mean, have you seen what people do? Mercy's sakes, the way some people talk will drive you crazy. Or what about if you've got somebody, you know somebody that invades your personal space every time they get up in front of you. They get right here on top of you. Or what about somebody that's inconsiderate or thoughtless? Uh, maybe you go to hug somebody and it's like hugging a porcupine. They just don't even want to see you there. Or maybe it's somebody that just won't stop talking. Mercy. I know. I've either seen them or been one of them. Happens to all of us because we're people. People tend to get on people's nerves pretty quickly, especially in such times as these where we're all shut in or things are going on, the world's getting kind of wild. We get anxious. At, now, as I said, at, we are going to be talking about bearing with one another today. We're going to be digging in. We are joined together as God's family in a household of God. And that is what I want to focus on in our lesson today. It's in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. I want you to take time out to read what these verses say. I want you to understand, pray over them, and then... I want you to take time out as I'm trying. I know how difficult it is sometimes. We have to pray and we have to focus on working on those things. I want to encourage you this week, just as I'm doing, we are going to work together to bear with one another, to encourage one another, to inspire one another, and draw closer to Jesus Christ. Let's go ahead and read Ephesians chapter 4, 1 through 3. I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a worthy manner of the calling for which you've been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Now you're going to notice that the Apostle Paul here describes this beautiful picture of what it means to be together in Christ. In the first three chapters of Ephesians, we go and we find out this calling that, that, that Paul is talking about specifically. He goes into very succinct detail saying this is what we were called to. This is why we are here. This is the things that are taking place. Now, from verse, from verse 1 of chapter 4 all the way to the end, he's going to tell us how to apply such. And the very first thing he goes and he says is that we are to walk with humility and gentleness with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit. We are to bear with one another in love. Now, looking at a couple other translations can often give us a little hand in understanding where they're going with this. Let's take the New Living Translation, for example. I like this one. Making allowance for each one's faults because of your love. Or what about the New American Standard that reads, showing tolerance for one another in love. You see, the Greek word actually means to endure or to put up with something that is difficult, whether it be a person or a circumstance. And Baker's exegetical commentary goes and says that the word actually means to put up with something annoying or harmful. Now, I know what a lot of people are going to say here. People first thing going to say, now, preacher, I try to tolerate everybody, but there are just some things I can't deal with. How many times have you thought like that? Things I can't deal with. I just, or you said these words maybe, I don't have to put up with this, or I don't have to tolerate this. How many times have you said that in your head or out loud? How many times have you said it? I know I've said it before. I've said it several times in the past. The truth is, actually, we do. We have to bear 
with one another. We have to tolerate one another. We have to put up with one another. Now, we hear that and we think we're doing all this all the time, right? We're going through, well, Brother Rob, I know. I put up with a whole lot. I do, really. I mean, I put up with my neighbor. I put up with my wife. I put up with my husband. I put up with the children. I deal with the folks at work. Shoo, I even, I even tolerate the boss. I know how it is. I know exactly how you feel. But there is a huge difference in the way that's going and the way the Bible's talking. I want us to really look at what God is saying here. Look again at those words in Ephesians chapter 4. Look again and take note of what it says here. We are to walk bearing with one another in love. We are not to just put up with each other. Rather, we are to put up with each other in love. And that is something very different. You see, when we put up with each other without love, the result is going to be grudges, resentment, hate, and a general dislike for one another. If you don't include love, it's just like Paul said. If you go and sound off and say, you know, you do all these great and wonderful things, all these great and wonderful gifts that you have, and you don't do it in love, then it's all for nothing. That is what that's what First Corinthians one that's what First Corinthians thirteen says. It, it the first three verses basically sum down this way: If you're not doing it for love, if you're not doing it for God, you're not doing it for the right reason. If you're not doing it with love, if you're not doing it with passion, if you're not doing it for that passion that we're supposed to have with Christ, then we're doing it for the wrong reason. But see, we need to consider. We really do need to consider a few things. Putting up with each other in love is a lot different than just tolerating one another and just saying, oh, well. Our failure to bear with one another in love is why strife occurs in our relationships, why we argue and fuss. It is why marriages fail. It is why churches split. You go back and look at the track records. Look at the way things go. When we allow ourselves to just tolerate, and by tolerate, I mean tolerate without love, or to put up with without love, or to bear with one another without showing love, you'll see divisions. I remember going into a congregation one time with a friend of mine, and he was preaching the revival, and he looked and came in there, and after he was done, he said, Did you see what I saw? I said, no, what are you talking about? He said, it felt like that room was cut in two. There was this group over here. They were all willing to talk and go together, but this side over here wouldn't touch them. This side over here would talk amongst themselves, and this one wouldn't even look at them in that direction. It was like the church was tearing itself literally in two. That can happen to all of us. It can happen to us whether we are a part of the congregation or at home or with our friends, or with our, pe our friends and our peers at work. It can happen anywhere. So what do we need to do? We first do not need to place those kind of unreasonable expectations on everybody that we're, that we're better than they are, okay? We can't think we're better than anybody. Let me be honest with you here. I know I irritate you guys sometimes. I know there are times when my mouth runs so much, it irritates you at some point. I may make a point and you don't like that point. Or you may say, well, he's just a fool. He don't know what he's talking about. He's just one of these ramblers. Or you might just think, I'm being a hypocrite. I understand. But I can also ask you the same question. Do you annoy me sometimes? Do people annoy me? Yeah, absolutely people annoy me. A lot of different people annoy me. It don't have to be any specific person or any specific trait. But do you know why? People are going to be people. We're going to annoy each other. The problem is when we go and we start thinking that we're better than other people, when we start thinking we've got the answers and the other people don't, when we try to prove ourselves to be right, 
and stop caring and showing the love of Christ. That's where the danger becomes most imminent. That's where our problem lies. We will say we'll tolerate people, but what happens when a drunk comes into church? What happens when somebody that is a known druggie comes into the church and he's all and he's all drugged out and he's had a hard day and a hard night and he's just come into the church and he's just sitting there? And you look at him. How do you do it? Do you go and you tolerate him and say, well, I ain't going near him? Or do you tolerate him with love? And that you go and you show love to him and say, hey, how are you? We're here for you. It doesn't have to be somebody that's the greatest sinner on the planet. It can be somebody that's dealing with an emotional sin or a hidden sin. It can be somebody that doesn't want to talk about things and that isn't wanting to go and make a public spectacle of everything. And that's a hard thing to understand. We have to stop living with unreasonable expectations on one another. We have to stop it. I can go and put my morality on anybody and it's not going to fit. You can do the same thing. You can put your morality and your viewpoint on anybody else and likely it's not going to fit the same way and you're going to say, no, 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 you're doing it wrong. You're not doing it the way I want you to. Stop being that way. I have to stop being that way. And I'm saying that bluntly for me. I've got to stop being that way. I have to quit going and putting my beliefs on other people in that way, forcing my way instead of God's way. And I need to bear with one another. We're not all on the same level. Not everybody's on the playing field acting the same way. We have to love one another and bear with one another. You're going to be irritating to others, and I'm going to be irritating to others as well. It's just a part of life. The problem is also how we handle each other. You see, consider again what the Apostle Paul said. He says we are to bear with one another in love. We will not cease to love others because of their faults. We can't. The problem is that another person does something irritating, whether it's intentional or unintentional, and we don't handle it with love. What we do is we get irritated right back. The perfect solution to irritating people is to be irritating, right? It's to go and be the person they don't need to see and what you don't think they should see. No, the perfect solution that God gives us is to love in return. If you can't say something, step away for a minute. Tell them you're going to just be back. You'll talk to them later. Just walk away. Don't fight. Don't yell. Don't get irritated. And don't be irritating. Be one who has the confidence to trust in God and pull away. Let God work with you. Let God encourage you. The perfect solution is for us to give love. Bearing with one another in love means that we're going to, we, we will not stop loving each other because of our faults. Now, what I hope we are seeing is that we'll bear with one another in love in a two-way street. You see what I'm saying? That you think you're putting up with that person in love, but guess what? They're actually putting up with you in love just as much. There is always something that we are bearing with about each other. One of us is going to be bearing something that the other is doing. We're going to do that. That's what Christians do. That's why we try to assemble and be a part of the body of Christ as often as we can. Not because it's a glorified golf club or anything like that. This ain't a social activity. It's something much deeper. It's when a family assembles. It's when the family comes together. It's when the family goes and spends time looking, nurturing, and loving one another. The body of Christ must be a safe place where our offenses, our offenses and mistakes are taken and qu quickly forgotten. Now, I know that sounds crazy, right? How can we forget all these terrible things people do? How can we go and put that behind us? How terrible is it when the children of God bear grudges, though, and hurt one another? It's worse. We cannot forget that all of us have been rubbed 
the wrong way at some time at another. We've made mistakes. We've done hurtful things. We've said the wrong thing and put our foot in our mouths. Those things happen. Who has not felt like they've done that, at least on a daily basis? But we are not to be, we are not to go and put that as the forefront. We are to bear with one another in love. The Apostle Paul told us in Corinthians that love bears all things and does not keep a record of wrongs. Did you catch that? That's 1 Corinthians 13 again. That's the seventh verse. Bears all things and does not keep a record of wrongs. You see, love is not resentful. It is so important that Paul emphasizes an entire part of the first... First Corinthians letter to that. We have to be willing to understand and accept that. So how can we bear with each other in love? What can we do to, successful, to successfully show this tolerance in love for each other? Well, looking again at Ephesians 4, 1 and 2, you'll notice that there are three character, character traits that come out when we go and bear with one another in love, the first thing you notice is that we walk with all humility, gentleness, with patience. Now, this is not by accident. Over in Colossians 3, 12 through 13, the Apostle Paul used the same combination before speaking about bearing with one another. When he says, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. So you see, three keys for bearing with one another in love. First, practice humility. That's a hard one sometimes, ain't it? No one wants to be humiliated, right? They don't like that. Well, being humiliated and being humble are two totally different things. To be humble means you are willing to be meek and take action. Don't think so much of yourself or about yourself. We cannot, we cannot lovingly bear with each other if we are not doing the things ourselves and are getting irritated by each other. Second, we need to have gentleness. The letter to the Colossians says kindness and compassionate hearts. The letter is saying very much that same idea of gentleness and meekness is a consideration to have for others. Submissiveness toward others and courtesy for others. Now we are not seeking retribution but self-restraint. Okay? We consider others first. All right? We consider others first. And that's the other thing we have to do. Finally, we have to have patience. We have to have patience. Oh, man. There's a word that nobody likes, is it? I always tell folks, don't pray for patience. God will give it to you in the most unusual way possible. You'll get hit with all sorts of different things. But that is how we learn patience. We learn patience by actually practicing it. No one is perfect and even close to perfect. So we are to be patient with each other's weaknesses. We must stop living with unreasonable expectations of each other. Now, to encourage this fully, and, and, and to encourage this fully so that we will obey the commandment, I would like for us to consider what 1 Timothy 1, 15 through 17 says as the game changer for our life. I've been reading this several times this week and praying over it. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But I receive mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. 
How did Paul take himself? How did he look himself in the mirror every day? Well, he saw himself as the center of sinners, the king of sinners, as he would put it. Why, why would he go and do that? Well, was he just walking around looking to beat himself up or feel sorry for himself or be ashamed? No. By seeing himself as the chief of sinners, he could appreciate the love and grace of God to save him. The very first thing we have to understand is God is not just here to save everybody else. He's here to save me. You say that to yourself. God is here to save me. It's hard to say, ain't it? I know it was. It was very hard for me. I still pack some baggage with that. The truth is, I need to be diligent in it, though, and accept that God loves a failure like me. That isn't to put myself down. That's to build God up because he's the only one that could make a new creature out of what I am. He's the only one that could go and give utterance. He's the only one that could make this guy speak in front of people and talk to people and share with people and love people. The other guy would not have done that. This guy that sits in front of you is a different guy because of what happened with Jesus. And because Jesus gave his life for me, a sinner, I need to be willing to submit my life to him and to share the good news to others. Paul openly declares that he's not perfect, but worst of sinners who has received mercy. We can't forget who we are. We are the worst of sinners who have received mercy. Notice what this shows. The perfect patience of Jesus. Jesus showed and continues to show the very perfect patience of bearing with us and towards us. Now show patience, humility, and gentleness to each other by bearing with them and with all of their sins, all that they are, all the weaknesses, all the irritations, in love. Jesus has shown great compassion and patience toward you. Other people are showing daily patience towards you. You bear with others in love. When people say the wrong thing to you, and it'll happen, or maybe you're the one that says the wrong thing to someone else, just shrug your shoulders. Let it go. Don't let it ferment. Don't let it just completely ruin everything you think of an individual. Don't let that bitterness take hold. You know you've said the wrong thing to others. Just as they've just said to you. Sometimes it happens. When people are unkind to you, just shrug your shoulders and let it go. Let it go. Elsa didn't come up with that. Jesus did first. When others are irritating, let it go. Most importantly, let it go by looking to Jesus Christ. Look at the one who has let go of your sins through his perfect patience and love. What better example do we have than Jesus Christ himself? It is only through Jesus that we are saved. It is the only means by which mankind can go and be restored, that we can have peace, that we can have hope. And we do that because he bared with us through it all. Christ was willing to die on the cross for us. Are we willing to yield our life over to him and make the difference in the lives of others that we love and care for. And more importantly, make a difference in our lives for Jesus Christ.
It starts with us first. We have to do this first. Believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Be willing to repent of your sin. Turn your life over to Him. Turn around from the wicked direction that you come from and go back to Jesus. Be willing to confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. To be willing to say that it is through Him you are saved, for He is the Son of God and your Savior. Be baptized for the forgiveness of sins to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let go of the old man and become new. And that new will stay with you as long as you keep running the race. Be that new creature in Christ. Be that new person in Christ. Be transformed through Jesus Christ. You can do that today. And I pray you will. If you have a decision you need to make, go tell a friend, go tell a family member, go tell your preacher. Or if you need to, please feel free to write me at any time. Feel free to see me on facebook.com slash brother Robbie. It's all one word. Come see me. Send me a message. Let me know. I'll bear with you if you'll bear with me. Remember, I can be a little annoying sometimes, but that's okay. I'll be praying for you this week. Continue to pray for those that are on our prayer list. We'll update that weekly. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful week and stay close to the Lord. Keep looking toward Him to be your inspiration and your guide. Don't give up, for He's not going to give up on you. God bless you and take care. Hey, are you interested in apologetics and examining why God's Word is historically accurate and true? Get your free copy of our ebook, Arrogant or Accurate, at www.myllbia.com today.